Hey guys, this is Casey Ferris. Thanks for checking out another one of my videos. Today I want to talk about LUTs for people who have no idea what LUTs are. I get a lot of questions about uh, how to use a LUT, what a LUT does, uh, what's the best way to you know, put a LUT on my footage. And here's the thing, I, I feel like a lot of people don't even know really what a LUT does or what it's used for. Here's what happens. They'll see something like this online that's a before and after of a LUT. And so this is Blackmagic footage before a LUT and this is after. So they'll get all excited and go to any website they can find that has LUTs and download them. And then they have no idea how to use them. And so it can be really frustrating if you have no idea what you're doing. So before we get into how to use LUTs and all the specifics of that, I wanna tell you just what a LUT is. So here's a bunch of LUTs from Ground Control. These are available at groundcontrolcolor.com. And this is a pack called the Vengeance Pack. Now this is designed specifically for black magic footage. So it's footage that's shot in this log format that looks really gray and washed out and it makes it look nice like this. When you download LUTs, they come in files like this. They're usually a .cube file, but there's also other formats like 3DL and MGA. And there's also several other formats out there, but they're all basically the same thing. And here's what they are. So if I were to take any of these LUTs and open them say with Notepad, this is what it looks like. It's just a text file with a ton, a ton of numbers. So if this is a LUT that takes blue things and makes them green, this might be a light blue and it turns it into a light green. So that's all a LUT is. Now, how you use a LUT is you have to have a program that will actually open it and apply it to footage. You can't just download a LUT and like double click it and you know, open up your footage or something like that. It doesn't really work like that. They're kind of like presets or filters that you use with an existing program. So what kind of programs use LUTs? You can use a LUT in just about any program that plays with images and color, things like that. So Premiere will load LUTs. Old versions of Premiere will load LUTs with a utility called LUT Buddy from Red Giant. Final Cut Pro X will open LUTs with either LUT Utility or a free program called FCPX LUT Loader. Resolve opens LUTs, Speedgrade opens LUTs, uh, Photoshop opens LUTs. There's tons of programs that will open a LUT and apply it to footage, but a LUT itself isn't software that you load your footage into. It's just a preset for existing software. And because a LUT is pretty much just a text file, it works on Mac, it works on PC, it even works on Linux. You just have to have software that runs it. And so there is no like compatibility issues. If you open up your LUT folder on a Mac, sometimes they'll show a preview that says .exe. And people look at that and they freak out and they go, oh, these are .exe files and you can't run those on a Mac. Here's the thing. Sometimes when OS X doesn't know what a format is, it'll just give it a generic icon. And sometimes that generic icon says .exe. It doesn't mean anything, it's just the icon. If you open up Premiere or Final Cut Pro X on your Mac, and you load a LUT the way that you should, it's gonna work great. So don't worry about that. Another thing people try and do is open up whatever app they're using and they try and import a LUT just like they would import footage. And of course, if you go to your LUT folder, you'll find that none of them show up because you can't import a LUT that way. It doesn't work that way. Remember, a LUT is more like a preset and you don't import presets this way. You only import media this way. So it doesn't even make any sense to do it that way. Here's how you do it. In whatever app you're using, there's gonna be some type of effect that will load a LUT for you. In Premiere, you can do that with the Lumetri Color effect. And so if you open up the Lumetri Color panel, under Creative, there's a thing that says Look, and you can go to Browse, and you can find the LUT that you want, and put that on your footage. And then you can adjust it and do all sorts of fancy things. But you have to load it through some type of LUT loading tool. And the only difference between the tools is some of them will let you customize it, like, the Lumetri color panel has a intensity slider that just multiplies those numbers in the LUT to give you a stronger or weaker effect. Let's have a look at another tool to load a LUT inside of Premiere. This is called Red Giant LUT Buddy. This is available for free from redgiant.com and I just drop it on my footage. And here under my effect controls, I now have LUT Buddy and I can click this little thing right here. I can load LUTs with this. I just need to pick a .3DL format. So if whatever LUT you have has a .3DL version, that will work great and apply to your footage and look beautiful. Most LUTs can even be opened in Photoshop. So in the last few versions of Photoshop, if you go to Window and Adjustments, there's a little Adjustments panel here and this little table button to the right says Color Lookup. 
and under load 3D LUT, just click that and then hit load 3D LUT again, and it'll open up and you can select your LUT and apply it to your image. So that's the really cool thing about LUT is it's kind of like a color preset that will work in just about any program. So you don't have to have a premier three-way color corrector to use the preset. Something else about LUTs is there's, there's basically two different types of LUTs. There's a creative LUT and there's a utility LUT. Now here's what a utility LUT does. Here I have my flat BMD film footage. If I go to look and browse and I grab BMD film to 709, it just takes this flat, gray, ugly looking footage and makes it look good. So that's what a utility LUT does. The other type of LUT is a creative LUT. And what that does is take footage that already looks good and just adds some style. So I have an adjustment layer over my corrected footage. And if I go to look, find a stylistic LUT, like this LUT called Charm, this gives this footage some style. It just takes this existing footage that looks pretty good and gives it some style. And with any LUT, it's important to think about the type of image that you're starting with. This stylistic LUT is called a Rec. 709 LUT. And what that means is the image that you're feeding into it should be a Rec. 709 image, which just means that the blacks are black, the whites are white, and the image has good saturation and contrast. This image out of camera is called a log image, and without getting into a bunch of nerdy stuff, it basically means that it looks really bad. So you don't want to start with a log image like this and then add a 709 LUT because it's going to come out looking really weird. But if I turn on my correction, you'll see it comes out a lot better. And that's because each LUT is designed for a specific type of image. Now this utility LUT that makes ugly images nice is designed for this type of log footage. And so when you put it on this log footage, it looks nice. So there's a LUT that's designed for log footage and a LUT that's designed for 709 footage. And the problem is, depending on the type of camera you're using, this log footage is gonna look a little bit different. Footage shot in BMD film on a Blackmagic camera looks really different than Protoon footage shot on a GoPro. And so I'm really careful to pick the right type of LUT for the type of footage that I have. If I were to pick a Protoon LUT, you see it's not gonna come out as good. Even though it starts gray like this, I put it on there, this is designed for GoPro footage. It's not gonna look great on Blackmagic footage. However, if I were to take some Protoon footage shot on GoPro and apply this Protoon to 709 LUT, it comes out looking great because it's designed for that type of footage. At Ground Control, we also have what you would maybe call hybrid LUTs, which kind of mixes the two together. So you can start with a Protoon image and grab a LUT, say from our Rain Protoon LUTs, and at the end, you'll have a pretty decent looking shot with some style applied to it. And that's because it's designed for this flat Protoon footage. So use the LUT for the type of footage that you have. The last thing I wanna mention is that there is no LUT that works in every single situation all the time. Sometimes they need tweaking. This is again shot in Blackmagic and BMD film. And if I go to my creative look here under the Lumetri color panel, and I find BMD film to 709, and I load that, it looks good, but it's still dark. And the reason for that is this shot is dark. This isn't gonna fix every single little problem with your footage. Most LUTs are designed for footage that has good white balance and good exposure. So if you have a problem with either of those, you're gonna to have to fix that in addition to adding the LUT. So I can add my LUT in here, but it's a good idea to go into basic correction and pump up my exposure. And I might have to play with these settings a little bit just to fix the problems with the initial footage. And so now I have a really good result. So for anyone that's had a little bit of confusion about LUTs, I hope that clarifies some things for you. And just a note, if you're looking for some good LUTs, check out groundcontrolcolor.com. We have tons of LUTs that are made for specific cameras like Blackmagic, Canon, GoPro. We even have some new LUTs out for the DJI Inspire and Phantom 3. And the best part is if you click on free LUTs up at the top, here's a whole bunch of absolutely 100% free LUTs for you to download and use as you please and hopefully it'll make your footage beautiful. So thanks for checking out this video. If you like this, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. And of course, for more color grading, editing, post-production tutorials, subscribe to my channel here on the YouTubes. That does it for me. My name's Casey Ferris. I'll catch you next time.